So say we have a region bounded by a function f of x, the x-axis from x equals a to x equals b. We know that this region is the definite integral of f of x from a to b. Now let us imagine that we are to rotate this region about the x-axis. Imagine that it traces out a solid as it completes its revolution. This solid that we have generated by rotating a region about an axis is what we will refer to as a solid of revolution. We are not restricted to the x-axis when talking about axes of revolution. So let us generate this same region as we used in our earlier illustration. We'll now rotate this region about the y-axis. So we can see here that we can generate different solids of revolution with different volumes even as we use the same two-dimensional region and rotate it about different axes of revolution. The resulting solid has a hole through the middle with the inner walls colored green. We can compare it with the solid of revolution that we generated earlier. So how are we going to apply what we know about integrals to find the volume of a solid of revolution? Let's take the ith approximating rectangle with the height of f of x sub i and with width delta x. If we rotate this rectangle about the x-axis, we will generate a disk. Now a disk is basically a short cylinder. So to find the volume of this disk, we look to the formula of the volume of a cylinder, which is given by pi times the square of the radius multiplied by its height. In our disk, the radius is given by the value of the function at x sub i or f of x sub i. The height will be given by delta x. And so the volume of this cylindrical cross-section will be pi times the square of f of x sub i times delta x. Let's now take all the n approximating rectangles of our two-dimensional region and rotate them about the x-axis to generate approximating disks or thin cylinders for our solid of revolution. Adding all these volumes together, we get this summation expression approximating the volume of our solid of revolution. And to get the exact volume of our solid, we will take the limit of this summation as n approaches infinity. Which will lead us to our final formula for the volume of a solid of revolution using disks, given by the definite integral of pi times the function squared evaluated from a to b. It is also possible for the area between two curves to be the generating region of a solid of revolution. So taking an approximating area, and revolving it around the axis of rotation, which is the x-axis in this case, a thin hollow cylinder, or a washer, is generated. If you are unfamiliar with the term, the washer, these are what washers are. And these are generally used to evenly distribute the load in screws and other threaded fasteners. The volume of a hollow cylinder is given by pi times the difference of the squares of the outer and inner radii multiplied by the height of the hollow cylinder. The outer radius is given by the upper function, and the inner radius is given by the lower function. The height is given by delta x. Adding up all the approximating volumes and taking the limit as the number of washers approach infinity, we have our expression for the volume of a solid of revolution using washers as the definite integral of pi times the difference of the square of the outer function, which in this case is the upper function designated by f sub capital O, and the square of the inner function, or the lower function, designated by f sub capital I, evaluated from A to B. And we'll continue this lesson on our next videos, where we'll take a look at some examples. So for now, thanks for listening.